Hey everyone, thanks again for joining Tankers Fantasy Football, where we finally made it to week 9 here of the fantasy season, and we're going to give you some more matchups here. Yeah, instead of breaking it down game by game, we're going to try to shorten up the videos for you and just give you like a good matchup, bad matchup kind of thing. We're going to start off with some quarterbacks, and I know these guys are kind of like plug and plays, but these might, these guys might be the top scoring quarterbacks in the, in the week uh, this week because of their matchups. We're talking about Aaron Rodgers against them Colts. Or the 26th against quarterbacks. Talk about Drew Brees against the Niners, who are 25th. And I know Drew Brees is kind of a little iffy on the road, but no damn way you're sitting them against them Niners. I mean, that's just crazy. And we're talking about Matt Ryan on Thursday night playing against them awful 31st ranked Tampa Bay uh, against quarterbacks out there. I mean, my goodness, Matt Ryan might go out there and just light them up this Thursday night. So those are the big three. And another guy that we're going to give you that. He might be your second QB on the roster, but due to the matchup here, we got Jameis Winston, and Atlanta is giving up, ranked 32nd, giving up points against the quarterbacks this season here. I mean, my goodness, I mean, you have to run out Jameis Winston. I know that Thursday night's a little sketchy and you like to stay away from it, but I mean, against the 32nd ranked team against quarterbacks, I think it's all systems go fucking Jameis Winston this week, baby. For real. And some dudes with bad matchups this week. I mean, oh, I know Carr went out there and he had, oh, 513 yards, was the most ever by a Raider. But this week he has had a very tough spot against them Broncos. I mean, it's a tough spot. I mean, I don't think anywhere near he can have a top five quarterback numbers this week against them Broncos. I just don't see it. No, I think he's a sit. And some other guys that... I mean, you might have to play, but definitely temper expectations. Matt Stafford, he's against Minnesota, but Minnesota has actually looked not nearly as good in the last two weeks. They've had Wince and Color put up some decent points against them. I mean, Color went out there and had a pretty decent game against them. I know Stafford, I mean, it's in Minnesota, right? So, I mean, that's a little worse for Stafford, but... I mean, I think if you got any other option, I think you should bench Stafford. And another guy who's definitely on that bench radar is Tyrod Taylor going into Seattle Monday night. I don't think any of you have any other option whatsoever. I think you have to go that way with Tyrod Taylor. But in that same game, I mean, matchup proof. I mean, this, I mean, the Roto World talking about Russell Wilson is what, their start of the fucking week last week? I mean, my goodness, Roto World, when are you going to start toting around Russell Wilson's like he's something? This bum, we're bringing out first time ever. We're bringing out the shit gun, baby. We're bringing out the shit gun on Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. And I know Jimmy Graham and Christine Michael have been you know, all right for you, and you still got to play them. But guys like Doug Baldwin, I mean, oh my God, Doug Baldwin, let's cock it up one more time for you. And that's cocked, and we just cocked and loaded on Doug Baldwin because this bum hasn't had a red zone target since week three. Oh my God, Doug Baldwin. Sit until further notice. I don't care who he's playing. And same along with Russell Wilson. One more time, point it at him, cock and load it. Seattle. <laughs> Russell Wilson is a top three, top five drafted quarterback. He's 27th in quarterback. Straight trash. How Roto World totes him around like he's worth a shit is beyond me. Every week he's a top three or top five ranked quarterback. It's like, get over him. What are you, is, what are you Russell Wilson's brother? You got some, you got like some emotional investment in this guy because he has not done anything. And like I said, no passing touchdowns in the last three weeks. Who are we talking about here? I mean, I don't think there's any starting quarterback in the NFL you can even say that about besides Russell Wilson. I mean, I'm serious. <laughs> All right, let's get into some running backs here. We're going to go back to some good matchups. Devontae Freeman, Thursday night. We keep talking about this Thursday night game. If you've got anyone on Atlanta or Tampa Bay, I think you got to start them. Looking like Coleman's not going to go. Freeman going to be toting that rock. And Tampa Bay is 29th against running backs. Yeah, year. I mean, I'm usually not on that play them against on the, play them on that Thursday night football tip, but I mean, this week I think it's all systems go with Thursday night football players with the Falcons and the Buccaneers tuning it up out there. And another guy, Terrence West, who kind of had a big letdown against the Jets going into his bye week, but he gets a sexy boy deluxe matchup against the Steelers, who are 32nd ranked against running back. I mean, I think if you have Terrence West, you write him down as your RB2 and feel damn good about it. And guy, DeMarco Murray, a very good matchup. Had a huge game last week. Even his backup had a huge game last week against Jacksonville. 
And DeMarco Murray going against San Diego? They're against running backs? They're 30th in the league. I mean, I know DeMarco Murray had that little toe scare for us last week, but I think it's all systems go, DeMarco Murray. I think he's going to have another big game, plug and play RB1 against the Chargers this week. Carlos Hyde, they're talking about maybe Carlos Hyde's coming back, and if he does, I mean, playing against that 28th ranked D, uh, New Orleans defense against running backs, I think Carlos Hyde is an easy RB2, RB3 play for you this week, and you know, you have to, I mean, with all these buys and injuries going around, I think you feel really good with Carlos Hyde coming back playing against the Saints at home. Oh, I think I think if he's a go, I think he could be an RB, bottom end RB1 with how many yeah. bye weeks are going on. Was it six teams on bye Yeah, week? six teams on bye again, same as last week. I mean, if you're... And he's getting the work low, that's for sure. I mean, this is a prime matchup for him to come back and suit it up for, that's for sure. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, another must play, but I mean, you might you know write him down for top three finish, I think against the 26th ranked Cleveland Brown defense out there against the run. I think he's your boy toy this week, and I know he's your boy toy every week, but I think you can uh, expect him to be extra sexy this week. Now we got a kind of a combo here. We got the guys going against that San Fran front, who we know that San Francisco rushing defense giving up 170 yards a game. So we got Mark Ingram if you got him, but I don't know how good you can feel about it. And then we got Hightower as a possible waiver wire pickup this week. I think Mark Ingram is one more bad mistake, one more fumble, one more slip up away from eating the pine for a long time. I mean, they put Tim Hightower in that game in the first quarter last week, and they never even fucking looked back. They never even looked back. Sean Payton's out there talking about Tim Hightower somehow earned a roll. I mean, he got a 100-yard rushing against the Seahawks, so maybe he has earned a roll. I don't know who to even feel better about this week, but I think if you have either of them, you got to run them out there. Yeah, you have to chance it against the San Francisco run defense. It's there's literally no team that's worse. Oh, you got to run, you got to run either of them out there. Well, we got some bad matchups now going into. Uh, I mean, Frank Gore's kind of been your boy, but surprisingly, the Packers are second against the run this year. I mean, if you got other options, I want. I mean, I know Frank Gore's been your RB two sexy deluxe, but. Hmm, I mean, if you got other options, which you probably don't, <laughs> I mean, I'd think about going them, but I'd definitely temper my expectations for old boy Frankie this week. And we got Isaiah Crowell. He's been pretty solid. RB2 all year for you. He's going against Dallas, who is seventh against PPR points against running backs so far this year. And, you know, Matt Forte, you know, turned his, turned his season around these last two weeks, but this week he's going against a surprising First ranked against the run Miami Dolphin defense. And, I mean, I know you're going to play him regardless, but I just don't think he's going to have them sexy weeks that he had the last two weeks. I think it's more back to around that uh, hoping he gets 10-point range against the Dolphins this week. And a guy who you've been riding his magical train the past couple weeks here and back-to-back 200-yard Jay Adjadis before that bye week. But he's got the New York Jets front seven there which is about as good as anyone they're eighth against running back points so far this season and you look what they did even to terrence west yeah i mean he's looked real good and foster's retired and you're gonna run him out there regardless of what we say but i mean he could go i mean he, he could I mean, he could go out there and blow up a Winchell's again, but, I mean, I think his, uh... I think he's more like the 60 to 70 yard range. Yeah, I think week. his floor is a little lower this week against that Jets defense. And I think it's in Miami, though, isn't it? If it's in Miami, I think it's a little bit better for him. But, yeah, I think he might struggle to get up over 100 yards rushing this game. I think he really will. We got going to some wide receivers now. Busting into some good uh, plays for your wide receiver. And we got, uh, speaking of them Jets, their, uh, their run game defense is good, but their pass defense is not. <laughs> so we're going uh, Jarvis Landry as an all-systems go play this week. He, I, mean, I mean, PPR leagues, he's basically your boy, but I think he's definitely uh, talking about maybe even uh, low-end wide receiver one put out this week for old Jarvis Landry. And if you're hurting, and if, if you're, you're not, dying out oh, there. Oh, God, you're breathing your last fucking breath. <laughs> If you're bleeding your last breath and you need something off the waivers or you need something from the depths of Moria from your bench, Devontae Parker might, 
Oh my goodness, coming out of the bye, maybe they somehow snapped it out of him and maybe he might get in the end zone out there against the Jets. So if you're on the absolute ropes, I mean, Devontae Parker could be a decent play for you against against that uh, Jets secondary. He If if he's going to do it, it's got to be this. He's on uh, last, I, mean, the I don't la- feel sexy about it. The last, <laughs> last four <laughs> games, he's only gone over 30 yards once. Mm. So in one of those games, he had like I said, if you're hurting... He had one of those games. He had like seven receptions and got you 28 uh, yards. Yeah, he's not. I mean, but he's a 60, what, 67? 60, 67th ranked PPR receiver. Yeah, but I mean, if you're absolutely on the ropes and you need somebody in that flex who could possibly, with the lowest of floors, but a pretty high ceiling going against the Jets, I think this guy might be a Even boy. Kenny Stills against the secondary. If you yeah. got him and you're struggling with bye weeks, he could be a decent play for you. Yeah, not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got some chalk em up studs every week here in Julio Jones and Mike Evans. But, I mean, these guys are going to blow it up on Thursday night. I really do. Julio Jones went out there and, you know, laid another one of his random eggs for you with the 5.9 last week. He was only, like, targeted once in the second half. But I think they they say his knee's good to go, and if it is good to go like they say it is, I think it's all systems go against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this Thursday. We might be looking for a big game out of old Julio out there. And even a guy like Manu Sanu's came on here. Yeah, he's had a good week one, then he got it back together last week. But I mean, against the Buccaneers, if you're hurting and you need a wide receiver four, plug and play, I think Sanu's kind of your boy this week. Well, we got some Los Angeles receivers against that 32nd ranked secondary of the Panthers. And I know we're talking about dudes catching balls from Case Keenum. But, I mean, Brian Quick has had a decent, he's like eight, eight PPR points or better these last like four or five weeks with a, a 90 yard game. So we're talking, if you got Quick, if you got Britt, Tavon, Austin, if you're hurting on bye weeks, on which the you road. know there's a, we know you're all hurting this I'm week. playing Brian Quick in a league. Don't feel ashamed. I'm <laughs> but, feeling Brian Quick. We're in this together. But like we said, Carolina's dead last giving Don't up receiver points so far this year. Don't feel ashamed, baby. I'm with you. <laughs> Some some uh, top shelf wide receivers that have just the terrible matchup this week and Amari Cooper and Crabtree. I know you're gonna play them regardless, but I don't think I don't really don't think there's any way either one of these guys goes over 100 yards this week. No, I think it's a severe manage temptate or manage your expectations here. Maybe they find their way into the end zone, but. Against these cornerbacks, I can't see anything more than 15 points or so. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you get lucky and get in the end zone, that's really your only hope to get in uh, the 15 to 20 points this week against the Broncos, I think. And uh, this could be a possible sit of the week. This guy's been just going downhill slide every week, and Marvin Jones facing the Minnesota secondary, who's getting better. And I mean, if it wasn't for a touchdown... Jeffrey, I mean, he had a pretty pedestrian game. Yeah, I mean, mean, the Minnesota, you know, they're pissed at themselves. They lost to the Bears. Nothing's worse than losing to a bunch of girls and losing to a bunch of Bears. But, I mean, Marvin Jones, I mean, I think the Vikings coming back home, feeling pissed off about it. I think they're looking to get a little revenge against the old division rival Lions. I think Marvin Jones might be a total sit this week. Yeah, we said Denver is number one ranked against receivers so far this year, and Minnesota is number two in fantasy points against receivers. So mm. really not much hope against those guys. No, nah, not really much daylight out there. Moving to some tight ends. Who what? we feeling? Who we feeling? I know Kyle Rudolph's been kind of wetting you down these last couple of weeks since they came out of the bye, but I mean, against the 30th ranked uh, defense against tight end in the Lions, I think you could feel pretty good about old reindeer games this week. I think it can. I streamed a guy like CJ. I don't even oh know my his God. name. Oh, my God. Ferochevich or some and, shit. And got me the, 15. Oh, that bum from the fucking Texans. Somehow <laughs> you put this guy in there and he scores. Oh, my God. I was some crystal ball magic my little pretty bullshit and <laughs> but, but any, my little pretty if you're a tight if your tight ends going against detroit you're looking pretty good though they just can't find, they can't find a way i'm to feeling if guys end. like cj krokosovich or whatever the fuck can get in there i think old reindeer games can have a decent game at home against them i'm feeling it 
Yeah, we got Gary Barnage against the 31st ranked defense against tight ends and the Cowboys. And Gary Barnage is a borderline tight end one play this week. Feeling good it's, about it. And McCown, he loves them. Oh, feeling good. McCown's back. They're boy toys. They're in, you know. <laughs> Nobody loves each other more than those two dudes, and it's all in. I mean, you know, we're going to get on to Kobe Fleener. I know Kobe Fleener is kind of a desolation play. I mean, he's playing the Niners, so if you absolutely need a tight end, I guess I guess run him out there, but I wouldn't feel like fucking confident about it or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, he's the Jekyll and Hyde tight yeah, end of the year. Yeah, I wouldn't feel confident about it, but if you absolutely must, he is at least playing the Niners, so that's good for you. And then Jason Witten, I mean, he kind of saved his week in that game walk-off touchdown catch. But Cleveland Browns this week is who he's against, and they're dead last in fantasy points against tight ends so far here. Yeah, old Witten's more of a tight end two than a tight end one kind of moving forward. But if you're on the ropes, I think against the 32nd ranked defense against tight ends, maybe you can get some extra looks because maybe they can maybe base a game plan kind of around that, you would think. All right, some bad matchups. These first two guys, we don't even know if they're worthy of being on rosters anymore. Uh, I mean, Julius Thomas I mean, finds his way in the end zone to salvage his days. But other than that, I mean, he's basically unstartable. If he doesn't get in the end zone, Julius Thomas is a three to five point PPR man, and I'm serious. Then we got another boy, Jesse James. The outlaw. <laughs> The outlaw, he started off decent, found his way in the end zone a few times to start the year, but he's basically a sit moving forward. Yeah, definitely sit at least until Roethlisberger comes back, and then still a wait and see what he can give you. Well, these other two guys, I mean, you're going to play him. I mean, Kelvis Kelsey just resurrected out there against you after having like three or four bad weeks in a row. Went out there and put it on out there. And, I mean, if he's playing, but he is playing against the Jaguars, who are some magical way, like, fifth against tight ends. But there's no way you're going to bench Travis Kelsey this week. That's just crazy. Yeah. All right. Is that it? So there it is. We gave you a quick rundown. Like we said, we're mixing it up. Every quarter of the season, we're going to try something a little new. So this matchups, we broke the good and bad strictly by position. You let us know what you think. Leave your comments. Make sure you subscribe. Like us. Follow us on the Twitter. Follow us on the Twitter. Take your dick out. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I am all in. All right. Well, I answer your who do I start questions. And, uh, it's, well, it's nice to see you guys once a week, twice a week out there, whatever the fuck's going on. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you later. Later. Check you later. Thank <laughs> you.